Hey, Jessica here. Today I'm gonna to show you how to edit your photos using Lightroom Creative Cloud. Before we get started, I do want to remind you to make sure that you set your camera settings to shoot in RAW. This will give you so much more dynamic range in editing as opposed to a compressed image file like a JPEG. So if you under or overexpose a photo and you are shooting in RAW, you have so much more wiggle room to fix that photo. So let's get started. Let's jump right into Lightroom now. And here we are in Adobe Lightroom. So if your Lightroom looks a little bit differently, it may be because you are in Lightroom Classic. For this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the basics of Lightroom CC. So if you want to follow along, be sure to open that up. So first we are going to jump in and add our photos right away. So it's pretty self-explanatory to get this side window right here. We're just going to click this upper left hand icon and we are going to add photos. This is where we can add our photos from our hard drive or our camera memory cards or anywhere these photos are saved on our computer. To import these, we just go to review for import and then we will be shown a window where we can select the photos we want to import and unselect the ones we don't. I already have all of my photos here, so let's get started. In my personal work, I usually am doing event photos, which means I'm continuously shooting, which also means that at the end of an event, I have thousands and thousands of photos. So I'm gonna show you a really quick way to streamline your selection process so you can choose the photos you want and get rid of the rest. So in order to quickly select our photos, we are going to be using this system down here, which is the rating system or the flag system. If you are like me and you take 1 million photos per photo session, this is a really great way to quickly go through your workflow easily and efficiently. So we are going to use these flags right here. So if we want to select a photo, we are going to press Z on our keyboard. And if we want to reject a photo, we are going to press X. So I'm just gonna quickly select these. I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to reject this one. I can pick this one pick this one, I will pick this one, and pick this one. I will get rid of this one, and get rid of this one, get rid of this one, this one, and this one. So now we have all of our photos selected. Now we are going to move into our workflow, and in order to make sure that only the photos we want get edited, we go up here to the funnel icon, and we are just going to click right here to select only the photos that we have flagged and picked. You can also use this rating system right here if that's how you also want to select these photos. So now let's move into editing. With editing, you do want to make sure that you are making those subtle changes. When you get more comfortable with Lightroom, you can feel free to experiment and develop your own creative style, but I do suggest sticking to the basics. The best thing about editing in Lightroom is that you are editing in a non-destructive way, which means in one week or one year, if you want to come back to your photo, you still have that original file saved. Let me show you how to start editing right now. Up here, we are going to go to our editing panel. If we just click right here, we have all of these categories, which is light, color, effects, detail, optics, and geometry. So we're not gonna go in full detail in all of these categories because you can really play around with what works for you and your photos because I wanna show you some really other amazing tricks that you can do in Lightroom. So first we go here to light and I'm going to click this last photo right here and you can adjust the exposure, the contrast, the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. So here, I'm just gonna take down the exposure just a tiny bit. I'm gonna increase that contrast. Also increase the highlights and bring down the shadows a bit. I can adjust these whites and then I'm just going to bring down these blacks just a tiny bit. When we wanna check our work, we wanna make sure that we're clicking this eye icon and we're holding it down. So it shows you the work that you've done. So as you can see, we're just making subtle adjustments here. Here you can go into the point curve and this is a great way to add more definition to your mid-tones and your highlights and your shadows. 
We're not gonna get so into this today, but this is a really good tool if you wanna customize your photos even further. And here we are going to go to the color tool. I really like this tool because not only can you adjust the white balance, you can also add your own personal touch by editing all of the colors. So I'm gonna stick with as shot and I'm going to just make this a little bit warmer. And here you can adjust the tint and I wanna show you what vibrance and saturation does. So when we increase the vibrance, we are actually increasing all of the colors, we are saturating all of them, except we are trying to keep the integrity of the skin tone. So this is what vibrance does in opposition to saturation. Saturation is taking all of the colors and making them all more saturated. So vibrance is a really good way if you wanna just make some of these colors pop. So I'm just gonna increase it a tiny bit and I'm gonna show you saturation. So as you see, when we do saturation, not only is everything else changing, but also her skin tone is changing as well. So to undo anything that you've done, you're just gonna do Command and Z and it's easily undone. So from here, we can adjust the color and I am just going to increase these orange tones a bit because I want her to really pop out. And since there's a lot of green in this photo, I'm gonna go to this green color. I want to maybe change the hue a bit to make it a bit more yellow. And I can decrease the saturation. And I do also want to decrease this luminous to make it a bit darker. So then she's really standing out against the foreground. So now when I press this eye icon, you can see the changes that we've made. That is all we're going to cover with editing. Feel free to experiment and try out all of the tools on your own time. Now we are gonna move on to cropping. It is pretty self-explanatory, but I do wanna make sure that you are very familiar with how to crop with different dimensions, with rotating, and all of that. So let's jump in right now. To crop, we are just going to click the second icon here. We can crop by using these presets. So if we want to do a one by one for Instagram or one by two, we can do that as well. If you want to do it as shot, but also crop this, then you can just move it around. You can also rotate this if you want to rotate your dimensions. So I am just going to crop this a bit and I wanna make sure that she is centered. If you do want to rotate your photo, you can also use this as well. I'm going to keep this right here. And once you're done, you can just press enter on your keyboard and the crop is set. Now let's move on to the healing brush. To get there, we can do the third icon on the right-hand side menu that we've been working on, or you can press H on your keyboard for a quick shortcut. The healing brush is really great if you wanna get rid of any blemishes or dirt or dust that has been on your lens. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take away some flyaways in this portrait, so let's jump in and I will show you how to do that now. So I'm gonna show you how to get rid of some of these little flyaways. If we go here and increase the size of our healing brush, I'm just going to go ahead and draw over some of these. And now once I zoom out, you can see that I can click and drag to where I want this to copy where we've just corrected. So once we're finished with that, we just press enter on our keyboard and we can adjust it. This is a really quick way to edit. If you want to be more exact with the blemish tool, then you can go ahead and use the tools in Photoshop to really fine tune everything. Now let's move on to the brush tool. This is perfect if you want to target an adjustment in a specific area of your photo. You can adjust anything that we did in the first editing tools and using the auto mask is absolutely brilliant. So let me show you how to do that now. So from here, we're going to go to the brush tool. Let me zoom out a bit. And this is where you can make specific adjustments to your photo. So here we can go to size. I just wanna make sure that auto mask is selected. I'm going to just select and paint over her face and her dress, just so we can make some fine tune adjustments. So I'm just going to do it pretty quickly. And now that we have this, 
we can go here and hover over this and you can see all of the red is where she is selected. So that is where we're going to be making our adjustments. So here I can increase the exposure, the contrast, all of that, just like we did in the first editing. So I can just increase the exposure a little bit. I want to bring down these shadows. And you can do all of this with texture, clarity, hue, saturation, all of that good stuff. So go ahead and play around with that. And once you are done, here is a really quick way to copy everything we just did into another photo. So now I want to go up here to photo and I want to choose edit settings to copy. I can either select all of these, but I actually want to not select the tools because it won't select crop, heel, and brush. All of those little fine tune things that we did, I don't wanna copy it over to another photo. But you do wanna make sure these are selected if you do wanna copy that all over, especially if you wanna have the same crop in every photo. So from here, I'm just going to press copy. And then once we go to this next photo that has similar lighting, I can just press Command and V on my keyboard and everything that we did before is now copied into this photo. And this is a really easy way to keep your photos cohesive and save you a lot of time editing. So once we have our photos done, let's export them to where they need to be. So if you want to export all of your photos, you're just gonna click the first photo while holding down shift, click the last photo, which selects all of these. If you only want to export a couple photos, you can just click the photo you want to select. While holding down shift, you can click the next photo, which then just selects those two photos to export. So from here, I'm just going to click export and I want to save this as a JPEG. I want to do it as full size. If you do need to change the quality, make sure that you don't go under 80% or you will lose some of the integrity of the photo. Here we have some more options to save our metadata. And then here we can go to file naming. So if you want to do a custom name, like if you want to save this as gold dress, it will be gold dress one, gold dress two. But for this one, I will just keep it as original. So output sharpening, I'm going to keep at none and my color space is going to be RGB. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to export my photos and they are ready to go. We did it, that is all for today. Let's take a before and after look at the photo that we edited today. As you can see, all of these small steps that we built upon really came together to make a big difference in this before and after. Remember to always do subtle changes and I know this was a beginner tutorial, but I am sure you will become an expert in this in no time. Thanks for following along and I will see you next time.